Hi there. Welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and um, I am looking forward to drawing with you today. It is uh, Thursday, as it is every week on this day, and um, I have to say, that set of drawings that you guys did in the last, well, two weeks ago, because we weren't here last week, but that was unreal, hilarious, beautiful, uh, just full of style and character. I just thought it was amazing. Really, really enjoyed seeing all those variations of, um, you know, variations of that distorted photo of me, but more importantly, variations of your faces and your distortions. So that was really exciting, really fun to see. And um, today we are going to make something equally fun, I hope. I hope that you are ready. I hope that you have um, art supplies standing by and that you are ready to get to work and to do some drawing. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, I took last week off, as you may have noticed if you came here and there was nothing going on. Uh, we had a sort of an impromptu vacation, which was nice. We went to La Jolla in, uh, on the California coast, just outside of San Diego. And, um, you know, we had some fun there. It was really nice to be in a different kind of weather. And um, it was nice to be by the ocean and to have, you know, just have a change of the place we've been in for the last 18 months within this house. Um, so it was nice to just see somewhere else and be somewhere else and, uh, um, you know, just take it, take a break. I hope you've had a chance to do that too to just have even just a few days off. We actually kind of were working the whole time. We have just so many things going on at Sketchbook School right now that we couldn't actually fully vacation. Is something going on? I just want to make sure you're on the right channel. Oh no, am I on the wrong channel? Let me... Everyone's here and nobody's... They aren't? Really? I was wondering where everybody is. Well, um, can you guys hang on for one second and let me just check and see? Because this should be correct. It should be correct, but you know, the vagaries of, um, let me see. I mean, there are a bunch of people here and there's 95 people waiting somewhere else. I was wondering, where the hell is everyone? I've been telling everybody you've been eating cereal. No, I was not eating cereal. You were eating cereal. I will show them the cereal. No, 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 easy, <laughs> easy. Go back to your station. Um, <laughs> I was eating cereal. Come on, Twiglet. So, all right, let me just figure out where these other people are and what, on, what are they doing live. over there? Ah, uh -huh. okay. Well, more people seem to be finding their way here, so I don't know. Maybe these... Uh, are you guys on uh, Facebook? Maybe that's what it is. They might be on Facebook, these people who have, have arrived from the right place. Well, there's more and more people seem to be flowing in now. I mean, there's 94 people here. Hmm. Okay. Not sure what to say. Yes, Facebook, aha, uh -huh. okay. Uh, but Grace is on YouTube. Some are on YouTube, some are on Facebook, so. I mean, this is, if you go to Sketchbook Cool YouTube's channel. Hmm, okay. If you guys will be patient for one second and uh, we'll find it, we'll find it. Chris Seidel says, remember when we all had to run over to another channel last year? I hope that's not happening here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> wow, okay, that's... <gasps> you know what? Oh my god. Hold on a second. I have a terrible feeling that something didn't get set up correctly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, well. So what, should I send everybody to a different link? Yeah. You want to send me the link? Uh, yeah. I do. Um, so where, where are you people? We're on, do you want me to send you this? Here it is. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, so we're in sync now. Yes? Okay. All right. Okay, so we're in sync now. Right? Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we're here. Okay. Thank we're you. Here. Blame it on the cereal. It's true. Okay. All right, you gotta, you gotta do the cereal Thank you, folks. Again. Come on, Twiglet. You know what? I will. I'm going to play the intro again because it was really good. It was really good and you may have missed it. And so I'm just going to play it for one second. And then I can eat some cereal and listen to the leaf flowers. Here we go. I'm going to play it one more time. Here we go. Hi again, it's me, Danny Gregory. <laughs> Welcome to Draw With Me, again. Thank you for coming again to Draw With Me, and thank you for um, watching that show again, although I don't need to thank you for that, because that was a, a privilege for all of us to see some incredibly wonderful distorted pictures. So that's, that's from two weeks ago, when we all drew distorted selfies, and um, a bunch of folks also drew distorted Dannys. I'm usually distorted, so it wasn't really that difficult. But it was really fun to see. And there's something I think that we all really enjoyed, and um, we also all kind of felt loose and empowered to, you know, to draw from distortion allows you to just not really worry and to tell that inner critic, you know what, it's distorted anyway, so if my drawing's a bit wonky, that's the way it's meant to be. I'm trying to draw an incredibly accurate drawing of a distortion. So it seemed like everybody enjoyed that and everybody had a good time. Janice is, is wishing me a happy late birthday. Yes, I had my birthday last weekend and, uh, you know, I managed to get through it. It was tough and um, it was, no, it was really fun. I had a really nice time. We had, our new thing is we have what we call dive-in movies. So we have a big, we set up a screen outside by the swimming pool and we all float around in the pool and we watch movies. Oh good, here comes the leaf blower. He'll be done in a minute. So anyway, so we, we watched um, a movie and fought off mosquitoes. It was really fun. Wow, he's really, he's really, uh, he's really having a hard time there. Okay, <clears throat> so the, uh, for those of you who found your way here, thank you for doing that. We had a minor technical hitch. That's kind of our style that in general at Sketchbook School, but also very specifically at Draw With Me, is to have, you know, techno hitches, no matter how much preparation I do, no matter how early I get up, no matter how much I think about stuff in advance, invariably there's things that happen. So whatever, it's fun. that's part of the fun of it. So I have a lot of fun things to talk to you about today, and um, let's get into it, as they say. Um, where do I want to start? I'd like to start here, I think, which is, um, to t I just want to talk about From Photo to Fabulous, which is our next workshop coming up. You may or may, or may, or may not have received news about it. If you haven't, it's probably because you're not on our mailing list. But um, 
Photo to Fabulous is a brand new workshop that's going to be coming up in t well, t only a couple weeks. And it is um, being led by Chris Kaler, incredible illustrator, works for the New York Times, for Harper's Magazine, for um, Marvel, for, um, uh, for Star Wars. He did all the posters for The Mandalorian. Um, and now he's doing a whole series of uh, great classic monsters for uh, Universal. Uh, m movie monsters. Anyway, he's an amazing artist, an incredible teacher. Also, he taught for us once before. He taught a class called uh, How to Draw with a Brush, Drawing with a Brush. And that was really incredible. A lot of people enjoyed it and um, learned a huge amount. I mean, we're all like brush artists now, thanks to him. But Photo to Fabulous is a new idea. And that idea is how do you draw from photographs? It's something that we talk about here on Draw With Me a lot because we're forced to draw from photo reference most of the time just so we can all have the same drawing experience. And, you know, there's a real problem with how do you, in, how do you make an original piece of art if you're looking at a photograph? Or if you have an idea in your head, how do you use photographs to bring, to realize that idea? So whether you're an artist who works from your imagination or an artist who finds themselves referring to photos, this workshop is going to take your work to the next level. No matter what level that is that you're at now, even if you're beginning, and a lot of beginners do start drawing photographs, and they're never really terribly happy with the, with the results. And so this is an opportunity to learn from one of the top illustrators in the world how to actually do it in a really great way, and also how to use um, brush pens on, an, on the next level too. It's kind of the next incarnation of this whole brush pen business that is really, really great. And we flew Chris here to Phoenix, and we filmed it here, and so we could really, it was, it was such a pleasure because it was fun to actually have a chance to work with him in person. So I just want to show you what uh, that workshop is going to be like, and then um, we'll move on to other stuff. A lot of people think using photos is cheating and tracing is wrong, but photos can play an integral part in a creative process and allow you to create a foundation to unlock your real creativity and artistic potential. And I want to teach you some of the secrets of illustration. How to use reference photography to create some of the most beautiful imagery you've ever made in your lives. I hope you will join me for sketchbook schools from photo to fabulous. What we're going to be doing is not tracing photos, but building on photos, using our creativity and imagination to generate imagery like we can never do before. I hope to see you there. All right, so that's just a tantalizing little hint of what this workshop is going to be like. I think it's going to, I think it's going to rock your world. I really do. It's going to be something that you're going to use in lots of different ways. And he's going to show you what professionals do, you know, how they get these incredible uh, images. And he said a really interesting thing to me. He said, if you draw from your imagination, your mind, your imagination is just reference, but it's not terribly good reference. So you imagine a monster in your head and you go, okay, I'm going to try and draw that monster. But your imagination is not great. Your imagination doesn't know how to light something. Your imagination doesn't really understand proportion. Your imagination can't, uh, you know, put that monster in a three-dimensional environment, all those kinds of things. And that's what illustrators do. Uh, I mean, Chris literally builds three-dimensional digital models to draw from. Yeah, it's, you're not gonna have to do anything like that. It's an entirely analog class. It's all gonna be working with uh, your hands, but it's going to be really amazing. And if you're a Spark member, of course, you will be uh, joining it for free. All workshops are free for Spark members. You'll get an email about that if you're on our mailing list. Okay, so that's that's pretty exciting. And um, so what I wanted to talk about today is okay. I was inspired by something. I want to show you what I was inspired by, which is something pretty cool that I just got. And it is this. It is this uh, special watercolor book that I got from Hanamula. It is toned watercolor paper. 
Never heard of that before. Toned watercolor paper. So in other words, it's, it is, and look, here you can see. This is, here, let me show you. This is what white looks like, and this is what toned looks like. So slightly gray, really cool, really interesting um, surface. And I've been trying out all of my different things on it to see, like, how do they all work on it? I have to say, it's really nice, and it's, it's textured from both sides, which is so great in a sketchbook so often. That isn't the case with watercolor paper. You can really, it's basically designed to be worked on with one side. This, you can use both sides of each page. And, um, you know, so far it's working great with everything. And you can see, you can use white really nicely, and it works great. So, so I'm really excited by that. So this is this toned watercolor book. So I was thinking toned, I was thinking tone. What are we gonna draw if it's toned? Like what's, what's gonna be the subject? So of course, you don't all have to have toned paper. You probably don't have it yet. Maybe you'll go and order it, and there's instructions below um, on how to get this, um, how do we look, toned watercolor book. But, so here's what I was thinking. Tony, Tony the Tiger. I started thinking about Tony the Tiger um, because I think it's sort of an interesting creature and I've been I've been drawing cats as you know I'm slogging <laughs> dragging my way I'm on the home stretch between third and fourth base on my hundred cats project you may or may not remember that about oh God it was three or four weeks ago I did some disastrous cat drawings and I punish myself by saying you must draw 100 cats. So I'm working my way towards that. And then I thought, well, tigers are cats. So maybe some of my cat uh, knowledge that I've been acquiring will be helpful to do that. Um, and um, that is what we are going to do today. So, so our focus is gonna be on tigers. You can choose to work on Tony or not, but um, I just, and I, as I was looking at Tony and as thinking about it, I was thinking, I was thinking about tigers in general and tigers as characters, right? For a long time, um, particularly in advertising, as you may or may not know, my background is in advertising, t animal characters were really a, pretty much of a standard thing in advertising. Now we kind of have the, the Geico gecko and uh, not many other critters like that, but it, there was a time when every brand was represented by some cartoon critter or another. But tigers in particular, Tigers are, are, I think, really cool animals, really interesting animals. And that, of course, Tony made me think of this guy. You know, this is like the, uh, it was Esso that became Exxon, Exxon Mobil, put, uh, put a tiger in your tank. It's kind of a similar sort of kind of tiger. You know, I don't know what the relationship was between the two. This tiger, I do know, historically, I do know that this tiger probably predates the this one, so. So, um, yeah, and this, I think, is probably long gone, although sometimes they maybe they use a tiger's tail somehow in, um, in their advertising occasionally. Well, maybe, maybe this is my fantasy. Anyway, and I'm thinking about other tigers. This is Sher Khan. You remember Sher Khan from, um, from The Jungle Book? And I just love that character. He was, like, very kind of snarky and cynical. I, not sure who the voiceover was in the original. I think Jeremy Irons maybe played it in a later one. Was it Jeremy Irons? Or was he in The Lion King? Anyway. Um, but yeah, so thinking about the char this character, again, a very different kind of a tiger, right? Haughty, totally different proportions to the face. You know, this one's kind of cute. Hey, Peppy, hey there. You know, uh, and then this one is sort of sinister, a bit sinister, but a bit sort of... <laughs> <laughs> he has this totally different kind of personality, different face. And so it's interesting to think about different um, things. Uh, Joey brings up the Lima emu. Not Lima. Is it Lima? Lima. What do I think? It's some insurance company. Uh, yes, they have an emu, but it's not cute. It's kind of dis disturbing. Tigger. This is the Walt Disney version of Tigger. I also like the Ernest Shepard version of Tigger. But this is Tigger, um, you know, another animated 60s, kind of totally, again, a different take on a tiger, much cuter. I mean, this is not, it doesn't even have, obviously doesn't have teeth. This is not going to be a dangerous animal, but has a lot of energy. Um, you know, I love these guys, and uh, you may be a, f a fan of Calvin and Hobbes like I am. But, you know, Hobbes is, Hobbes is also a toy tiger. 
um, and uh, he has teeth and he sometimes acts very tiger-like but different kind of body again long thin different proportions to his face again sort of cute different um, different kinds of just ways of interpreting this creature this is um, I think his name is Daniel something or other Daniel Stripes I think this is on Mr. Rogers it was this little really d decrepit tiger puppet that wore a wristwatch and that was on um, Mr. Rogers for years a very cute like totally non-threatening version of a tiger um, more of a teddy bear almost anyway there's another tiger Daniel right and then Daniel became this creature which I'm not that familiar with but this is a thing it's 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 on PBS it's a ch animated kids thing it's it's it came out after my son was an, was grown up so but he's cute too cute wears a sort of mr rogers kind of cardigan it's like a merger of the decrepit puppet and mr rogers daniel tiger yes daniel striped tiger is daniel striped tiger the name of um mr rogers version anyway but his name is daniel sounds familiar other tigers you know, I was just thinking like tiger, tigers are in some ways they've become kind of a bit, they're cute and fun on one level, but there's also something, we think of them in somewhat tragic ways sometimes too. Like they're, 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 um, you know, they're endangered and um, I don't know, they don't have what lions have. Like lions seem to be around a lot these days, but tigers less so. And of course there's this. Do you remember this? This is like 18 months ago this was the thing that everybody was watching the tiger king about this horrible creature in florida who um, ran this tiger zoo it was terrible so yeah so there was that wilma brings up my alma mater the princeton tigers there's the cincinnati bengals there's a bunch of sport sports tiger associations but here again completely different kind of tiger this is a much more naturalistic looking tiger, but also turned into a graphic design. So uh, a whole other way of looking at a tiger. And then there's this. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this is um, a cup that I got for my birthday. And I just realized this morning that it is about um, hunters hunting tigers. Isn't that weird? I only noticed it when I poured myself something. I was like, what is this about? And I said, they're hunting tigers. So yeah, so I'm drinking out of tiger hunting things. Yeah, that's me and uh, Patty, my late wife. Um, we were in uh, Disney World or something. I should wear that suit more often. I think I look good in it. Anyway, so when Tony the Tiger, going back to Tony the Tiger, because that's kind of what I wanted to focus on today, because I... I was a fan of Frosted Flakes, flakes, and they used to be called Sugar Frosted Flakes back in the day when one was allowed to talk about sugar. And uh, apparently when it came out, they had several different animals that they were considering as spokespeople. And this was, um, I think it was Kelly the Kangaroo, and then they had, um, I forget what some of, the, some of the other animals were. And Emu was one of them. Seems like a strange, unpleasant character to have on your breakfast cereal. I mean, at least kangaroos are cute, but um, this was this is the winner. It became this guy, Tony the Tiger. So this is in the early 50s, I think 1951, so like 70 years ago. So almost all of us probably had Frosted Flakes in our background. We may or may not have been allowed to eat them. I don't know that I was. I think it was like one of those special treats that we got occasionally. Um, and uh, so there, we, um, people are asking about that strange picture and Patty. Yeah, Patty was in a wheelchair, so that's why she's short. Um, so yes, yeah, so Tony, um, Tony the Tiger. And this, I thought this is an interesting approach too. I like this design. It's not what we think of as Tony anymore because he kind of changed over time. And he went from being this character to being this character. You can see he's like, his, the proportions of his head changed um, you know, he, and he, the real, the big difference, I think also was look at how his body changes. He goes from being kind of like a regular tiger standing up to being this 
um, really bulked up, macho looking guy, right? With a big chest and a th slim waist, you know? This is the uh, evolution I found of it, 1951 all the way up to 1990 when he became this kind of three-dimensional creature. I remember the ones that here represented by 1978. That's the kind of the ones that I remember, I think, because that's, that's probably like when I was a kid and that was sort of the look of it. Um, but yeah, so now he's like this big, like a, like a bodybuilder. It's kind of strange. Like they're trying to say that it's health, healthy, I guess. So he's like a big athlete. So anyway, so that, that was kind of what I was thinking about. I thought that was interesting and I thought that that would be fun to draw. And the thing I wanted to draw was this version. So this is a version of Tony the Tiger that's from, I think like the 70s, early 80s. So this is, this is, this is the, the Tony that I think of. Um, yeah. So Tony is, um, you know, he's not, he's not super threatening and super three-dimensional either. And uh, I kind of like that. So... This is what I was thinking, and I'm trying to think of how to challenge myself to draw this because, because I want to I want to break in this new sketchbook, and um, I want to try, and I want to take advantage of the fact that it is toned, and in fact, now that I'm looking at it, you see how Tony's face is sort of white, but his eyes are actually white. His face is almost the same color as this toned paper, so. I want to try and draw it as accurately as I can. Now, you are free to draw any kind of tiger you want. You can draw a cartoon tiger, you can draw a tiger, you can draw a puppet, you can draw a real tiger, you can draw anything you want to. Um, you could draw Tiger Woods if you want to. You could draw the Tiger King, but I wouldn't recommend it. But I personally am going to focus on this version of Tony, and I'm going to try and do it as rigorously as I can. This is, the, this is the challenge that I'm setting myself, is I want to be exacting with myself. Because this is a relatively simple thing. I mean, if you look at his head, it's basically a square that's been rotated, like 45 degrees. It's a square. And then he has these little ears coming off. So in some ways, like a cat, but with a much bigger jaw. Ah, Rachel brings up this blue nose. Okay, so this is an interesting thing. So I don't know if there's a, there's a whole phenomenon of people who say they remember things differently than other people. I forget what it's called. So um, the Berenstain Bears, and then there are people who remember them being the Bears, burst, Bursting Bears or the Bernstein Bears. There's a bunch of different things that are like that. And one of the phenomena, that, so people think that there might be parallel universes where everything is basically the same, but the Bernstein bears are different, are, exist as opposed to the Bern, Bernstein bears. Do you, do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Am I just blathering? Anyway, this business with Tony the Tiger's blue nose, that's apparently one of them. A lot of people claim to remember that his nose is always black, and other people say his nose is blue. I think, that, I think his nose is probably just blue and he just remembered as black because why would it be blue? Again, interesting phenomenon. We, we, you know, we fill it in, our, our memories fill it in. But All right, so this is what I'm thinking. And I want to, I want to really, I want to try and push myself if I can. I don't want to set too high of a set of expectations here, but I do want to try and do a good job. When I was a kid, we really didn't have much in the way of sugar and things like that in our house. We never really had soda. And uh, I think like on my birthday, maybe I would get, I would be allowed to have some kind of sugar cereal. Frosted Flakes, Sugar Smacks. I think they're called Honey Smacks now. Sorry, 
taking all my powers of concentration to do this. It's actually much harder than it looks. Yeah. Bless you. Sorry, my wife sneezed in the other wing of the mansion. I'm, I'm really, this is, this is, I'm, I've set the bar so high for, with myself saying this has got to be absolutely perfect that, and it doesn't have to be. Your version of it could be an interpretation, probably be way more interesting than what I'm doing. I'm just in the mo mood to, to be really um, specific and to really try and, try and get these details correct to slow myself down. That's so much of what I try and do with drawing and uh, to try and just focus and concentrate and also relax and be calm. It's, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> I totally forget now. Um, yeah, I was just saying, well, I mean, drawing for me is, is therapy, you know? It's therapy and it is time well spent because I don't know about you, but Life gets stressful. And we need we need a release. People are always writing to me and saying, you know, I feel so guilty when I stop to make art. And uh, maybe you're feeling that way about coming even to draw with me, like, oh God. Uh, I really don't have the time. I should be doing X, Y, or Z. And um, I understand that. You, or you feel like I have things to do for other people and I don't have time to do this for myself. But the fact is, when you do this for yourself, you can do more for other people. You know, you can, you can just be healthier yourself so you're there for them. I think that's that's so important. And uh, so this is not self-indulgence, I don't think. It's like getting exercise or all the other things that we're supposed to do for ourselves. I think it's more fun than exercising, but we have to do both. So yeah. I made, I've noticed that I've made his nose much narrower than it should be. That's been my one mistake so far, my one glaring mistake. It's gonna change his personality. This version of Tony also seems a bit more, you know, it's got more hooded eyes. I don't know if it's just this particular image of him. He doesn't have that like bright eyed and bushy tail look that he sometimes has in some of the other ones. I 
it's necessary to look a bit more sinister. Yeah, he's more sinister. A tiniest little change in expression just makes him feel different. So now I've reached that point that maybe you've reached in your drawing life where you've made a mistake that you now feel ruined it. You ruined it, and so you kind of just have a kind of a to hell with an attitude. Don't. Don't have that attitude. There's still a lot of great things to be gained from a drawing that's just not quite perfect. You know, it's still got, it's got its flaws. It's not perfect. I think my Tony it just has his head rotated a little bit more than, than the sample. So, So yeah, so now, okay, so I've got that base, I've got the basic Jim Jam done. And now I want to think about what I want to do, what I want to do with this. Let me drink some tiger hunting juice first. Um, maybe I could just, I could just do some cross hatching. Or, this is watercolor paper. I could get some watercolors or I could get some ink. I have some ink, I have some orange ink here. That's a vermilion. Uh, this is orange. But maybe what I'll do first is I'll make the black parts of it should I do that in ink too? Yeah, I'll do that in ink too. I was gonna, I was gonna kind of go in there and be, and be um, put some texture in the stripes because I kind of like the fact that, that this original piece. I think this is probably an animation cell. It looks like. So I'm using this orange, Windsor Newton ink. holding my breath while I do this. That's why I'm not talking, because I'm literally holding my breath. I keep realizing that I'm holding my breath because I'm just like, oh my God, I've got, got to do, do this perfectly. Uh, just absolutely ridiculous. It's Tony the Tiger. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's Tony the Tiger. It's not going in a museum. It's not gonna get graded. It's not, it's not gonna be on the final. It's Tony the Tiger. It's Tony the Slender-Nosed Tiger. You know, I have a friend, Prashant Miranda, and he is uh, was telling me about some time he spent in India. He's originally from India. He's Canadian now, though. But he spent some. He was in India, and he was sitting in a forest by some beautiful old ruins and he was drawing the ruins and as he sat there two teenage tigers walked out of the forest talk about holding your breath and then their mother came out too I think he took a picture of them from far away 
They weren't, but they came relatively close to him. These are wild tigers, not in a zoo, not in a preserve, just in the jungles of India. How cool is that? Fortunately, he didn't get eaten. But really, I mean, that is nuts. Nuts. Talk about Tiger King. What did I just do with that brush? I heard it. So yeah, so now I'm gonna use some India ink. Speaking of India, seems appropriate. A little bit of Indian ink here. When I was thinking about this this morning, I was thinking about drawing this tiger. I thought, you know, I'll, I won't do something cartoony like this. I'll, oh, I cross hatch it, and I'll, I'll do something really cool and different. But I have to say, as I'm, as I started drawing, I thought, you know, I kind of want to get this. I want to see if I can, if I can really do this accurately, and not, because sometimes those kinds of gimmicky, additional things that I'll do are really just a way of covering up the fact that I didn't get do it perfectly. So I'll be like, oh, I'll just cross hatch the hell out of it. Or, oh, I'll put really weird colors on it. Or, oh, I'll splatter ink on it. And then it won't be obvious that, uh, you know what, it's actually not a very good likeness. Or, you know what, I uh, totally screwed up the perspective on that. But today, I'm doing my very best to not cheat. This is the hardest part because I have to lean across this wet ink without my, putting my hand on it with this brush. Oh, I'm gonna hyperventilate. If if suddenly you see me, you hear a crash, and I've disappeared from the screen, that's because I've collapsed and passed out from from not breathing. might be the most challenging drawing I've done for a long time. Which is kind of sad. Oh, you know what I'll do? Turn the paper. That makes my life a lot easier. I wonder if I could get a job working on the Frosted Flakes account now. I wonder if that's a thing. If you work at, I guess it's Leo Burnett, if you work there on this account, do they say to you, okay, well, before you proceed, you're going to need to accurately draw Tony the Tiger. And then you'll be hired to work on the account. You get to make commercials. Tony the Tiger. I don't have the right red, and I really want the right red, so I think I'm going to end up using this brush pen because it's closer. None of my inks are exactly the right color. I can't be bothered to mix the right watercolor right now. I have all these bottles of ink. Oops, gone across, I've crossed the line. I've colored outside the line here. Damn it. Oh well. It's getting slightly more imperfect. Okay. So now, I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> okay, so here I have this. This is my color card that I made, swatches of my drawing ink. And I'm thinking that this blue might do the bit, do the job for the nose, right? But you can see none of these reds were really right. Didn't have the, they're not really, they're not right. And I want to get it fairly accurate. Oh, but I have to do the inside of his mouth. And there I might be in luck. So I can use this, what they're calling scarlet. 
and then I could use that deep red. Perfect. Okay, let's get that knocked out first. So here's Scarlet, and here's Deep Red. Okay, Deep Red. Deep Red's going in first. If I can... You have to have really strong... Um, forearms to be an artist. I don't know if you knew that, but yeah, opening bottles of ink. It's a proper workout. I feel like I'm going to strain something just now. Pull the muscle, opening deep red ink. All right, that's a little light. I may have to go back in later on and give it a second coat. And then next I'm going to use this vermilion. No, that's not what I want. I want Scarlet. All right, so I have Scarlet here. There she is, Scarlet. And, all right, Scarlet. I wouldn't have thought that this was Scarlet, but when I look at my swatches, I trust them. My swatches tell me. Sometimes the names of colors are not a wishful thinking. Okay, you know, I'm just saddened by the fact that I didn't get the bottom of his nose correct. Saddened, that's probably the right word. I'm not upset, I'm not, I'm not disappointed. I'm, not <laughs> I'm saddened, saddened by the fact that your nose is the wrong shape. But at least it seems to be the right color, pretty much. Still holding my breath. I'm working with this really small brush. That's part of the reason. You know, trying to be really careful and delicate. Ooh. Okay, needs more. So I have one more thing I want to do, is I, and, I, and I'm really, really afraid of it, which is I'm kind of thinking I might try and put some white into his eyes. But I'm very concerned about it because it seems like a real opportunity for a disaster. So I'm, what I'm going to do carefully, because I don't want to ruin that, is I'm quickly looking back at my colors and I have this, I have some white ink that I think is going to work. So white ink is a toughie. It's tough. It's tough to find a white ink that you really like. I've gone through a lot of them. Quite like the Windsor Newton White. It's quite good. Use gel pens. Man, maybe I should just use a gel pen. I'm afraid. I'm really afraid. I think I'm going to use a gel pen. Although that may be bad too. This is just, this is the opportunity where I humiliate myself in front of you once and for all. All right. I can barely see it. Can you see it? Yeah, you can sort of see it, right? All right. I'm going to stop there because it's this is getting nuts. Whew. I'm going to turn this Tony off for a minute. Have a look at him. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. You can see the whites of his eyes. Let it suggest a gouache. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just not in the mood to get my gouache out right now. And also, again, it's like when you paint with ink, it is, it's so liquidy that you can really get in there and do these really tight things. You know, but when you paint with gouache, sometimes... You know, it can just be a little thick. And then, you can't get in like this tiny detail that I'm getting in here. You know, you just worry about it because you think it's going to be globby. Oh gosh, that's a, that's a good drop. Cling to that brush. That would be typical. 
if just as I was finishing up, a glob of ink splattered on it. But yeah, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm definitely done. All right, so what else do I have to tell you? Um, can you add water to those things to lighten them up? Yes, absolutely. They're, they are, they are, I think they're, I'm not sure if they're water-based exactly, but yes, you can totally, and you can mix them with each other. You can mix a whole bunch, and I'll sometimes do that, you know, mix a few together. But uh, I just think, I mean, look at those colors again. They're great colors. Really good colors. Those are so the Windsor Newton drawing inks. All right. <sighs> okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me to breathe. This is pathetic. Pathetic. I missed the line on his left ear. My God, you sound like that voice in my head. But you're right. I did. I, I forgot. I didn't get that. God damn it. I didn't get. There's a little line, like a little hair in there. Yeah. Stop. This is exactly how you end up ruining it. Like I'm thinking to myself, like that little line right there, that little line on the eye. I have to go in there and fix it. And I have to go in and get this, get that gel pen to really fill in the whole thing. <sighs> this is not the kind of drawing I do a lot for obvious reasons, in part because I don't want to collapse, but also because, you know, I generally try and be looser and more or shooting from the hip and stuff like that. Today, I just thought, I know, how hard can it be? Okay. JJ's reminding me that I wanted to give the sketchbook away. And I've already decided, rather than doing a lottery, I've decided who I want to give it away to. I want to give it away to a person who, when I started talking about my cat, um, strat cat plan was working alongside me and has done a huge number of cat drawings too and that person is thistle you know who thistle i hope you're still there but i would like to send you this this tinted watercolor sketchbook because i think that you've been working really hard on it and you've been having a rough year and i thought it would be nice for you to have this and to try it out to see how you feel about it now if you're not here anymore I'm still going to send it to you. But, yes, I think that that would be nice. Yay, Thistle. All right, well, maybe she is gone. But my gesture, nonetheless, is complete. So, yes. Oh, yes, there she is. Good. Thank you. I'm glad. And uh, that will be fun. So I'll, I'll ship this off to you. So here's what else I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about something cool that is happening this week, which is uh, John Law Muir. John Muir. <sighs> John Muir Laws is joining um, Spark, joining Sketchbook School Spark. John Muir Laws is uh, an incredible nature journal journalist. He is um, knows more about plants and animals and trees and rocks and all that stuff than anybody I know. He's also an incredibly good teacher. And uh, he's joining us this week. Is it this week? I think it's tomorrow, in fact. He's going to be joining us. So um, I thought it would be fun to have a look at one of his sketchbooks. Let's do that. This is uh, our, our weekly sketchbook tour brought to you by Windsor Newton.
Indeed. He's amazing, isn't he? Seems that he's drawing on tinted paper too. Drawing on, uh, gr looks like gray paper. So that is pretty cool. He's gonna be amazing. He draws, as you can see, everything and beautifully. And just, I love the design, I love the lettering. Everything he does is super cool. So, um, he's gonna be joining us tomorrow. If, uh, if, you, if you join Spark today, you'll be there tomorrow too, if not. He's gonna be coming back um, on a regular basis now. He's part of our crew. So we're gonna learn from him on a regular basis. I can't wait for that to happen. All right, so a few other things, because we are now over time. Of course, so I, if you want to share your tiger, post it on social media, tag it, SBS Draw With Me, Facebook, Instagram, or in the Sketchbook School schoolyard, we'll find it and we'll post them and share them. Um, yes, uh, here's a good point also. If you want to buy any of the things that I use or just learn more about them, there's this horrible URL here, but you can find the actual, you can click it, it's down below. You'll see that is where you can find, they have like a store with all the stuff that I use in it. All right, um, it would be very nice if you would subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It would be nice if you liked this video that you said you liked it by clicking the like button. By doing that, you encourage the uh, all-powerful YouTube slash Google algorithm to share Sketchbook School videos with the world, which means that more people will learn to draw, more people will feel like they are artists, and the world will be a much better place for it. So you can accomplish an enormous amount by just clicking on the subscribe button. And uh, if you click the bell, then YouTube will notify you next time we come together. I have to tell you, next week, I think I'm posting five or six new videos. Yeah. Chris Kaler and I made some incredible videos together. We look at one of his sketchbooks. We talk about sketchbook tour. We, we spent half an hour poring over one sketchbook and talking about it. It was mind-blowing. And I recorded that. I also did a shorter version for you. We're going to talk about um, really how, how professional illustrators work with photographs. We're going to talk about that. We have a video that's going to be about him um, talking about these incredible new pens that he uses that I'd never seen before, and he's kind of explaining how to use them. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to be up there. If you subscribe, particularly if you click the notification bell, you'll find out about it. All right. Um, what else? From Photo to Fabulous, sign up for it. Again, you can do that at sketchbookschool.com. And uh, thank you so much to Windsor Newton for these incredible inks and those pens, and to Hannah Mula for this beautiful tinted watercolor book. And thank you for joining me here and in the other place and on Facebook and all the other places that people join us. And um, I'll see you again next week. Next Thursday, we will draw again together with each other.